Well guys, as it seems to go, two steps forward, one step back with the YZ. I think I've got some air in the rear shock. I'll be completely honest in saying I'm not a suspension expert and I haven't rebuilt that many rear shocks. The reason I believe it has air in it is because the adjusters don't do all that much and the rebound is pretty quick. And you can kind of hear that spongy sound it's making. Mike over at Dejan Moto has graciously offered his help. So I'm gonna pull this rear shock off and we're gonna see what we can figure out. Just in case you've got a YZ250 and find this helpful, you can get the shock out without removing the subframe. I removed the top bolt just to clear up another half inch, but from there you just raise the swing arm and then you can pop it out the side. I really hate getting the boot onto the carb, so being able to avoid having to take that off and on is really nice. Shock's back on the bench. Honestly, that took less than 10 minutes to pull. Off to Deja Moto. Mikey has been the go-to suspension guy here in the Gallatin Valley for quite some time now. He has an outstanding reputation because he has an incredible attention to detail and is a true master of his craft. He has recently expanded into CNC machining as well. So if you have prototype or small batch parts that you need machined, he's your guy. Naturally, the expansion into machining and the time that takes has made it really difficult for him to keep up with all of the demands of the suspension business. So if you are someone who has experience in the power sports industry and you want to expand your skill set or business in the off-road suspension market, definitely get in touch with Mikey. I will leave his contact info down in the description below. Mikey got me all squared away with the rear shock. Big thanks to him for lending his expertise. I almost don't believe it, but the bike is this close to done. I decided it was time to get a fresh air filter from Pro X coated in some no toil filter oil and installed on the bike. I have to imagine that it'll be easier to already have the air filter in the air box before installing the battery box and battery for that electric start kit than it would be to install the air filter after the fact. Granted, the air filter will have to come in and out of the air box anyway, and I know that the battery box is going to make that a little bit more annoying, but you're sacrificing something to get an electric start on a YZ. If you recall, in an earlier episode, I cut this little piece of aluminum as a number plate spacer because I didn't like how it fit on these triple clamps, but it was kind of a crude job and I had been intending to clean it up a bit, so I did that with the bench grinder and Primamex wheels. My new idle screw arrived. I ordered the Tusk one, which is adjustable by hand and no longer requires a screwdriver, which I think is nice and convenient for idle adjustments. I followed up by installing a Tusk hour meter. And then if you recall, the petcock leaked in the last episode. So I did a little petcock rebuild. And at this point, it was time to put the tank back on the bike and finally get those radiator shrouds installed along with some fresh graphics. For installation of those radiator shrouds, I used some brand new hardware from Fastmetric using their plastic fastener kit. And here were my initial thoughts seeing it all together. Wow, with this 2023 bodywork, the fact that the shrouds and the side panels flow together makes the big tank look so much better in my opinion. This is an oversized tank from IMS. Being an off-road build, it only makes sense that you should be able to go the distance. Here's a quick peek from this side really think it ties together nicely. So I think it's finally time to reveal the shroud graphics. Decal Works killed it on these, let's do it. So for anyone wondering, this graphics kit is based on the T11 series from Decal Works using a holographic base, and then they did some custom work on that YZ300 on the shrouds to match kind of the 2022 OEM shroud graphic, which I think looks nice and sleek. With those gorgeous shroud graphics installed, it was time to move on to the seat cover, it felt kind of weird taking a brand new seat cover off of a brand new seat, but we went with the custom seat cover from Decal Works. Black seat, black ribs with a blue accent on those ribs, Yamaha logo on the side. I really think the colors tie together nicely with the rest of the bike and Decal Works makes such a comfortable seat cover. I've had these on a lot of bikes over the years now and I'm a huge fan. I'm so excited right now, I just barely have words. I hope the wait for the shroud graphic reveal was worth it. I think Decal Works just did an incredible job on these graphics all around. So really at this point, I'm just waiting for the Panthera electric start kit and I'm so excited to get that thing installed. I just went to bleed the front brake and once fluid was through the line, it seemed like pressure would go higher and then lower. And I was thinking, what's going on? And then I noticed the brake line started bubbling right here. I can tell you this is the first time I've seen that happen. I'm curious if any of you have had a brake line bubble like this. So I will need to order a new front brake line. That said, the bike has been heat cycled a couple times and my neighborhood is no longer completely covered in ice. So I think it's time to take this girl for a spin. 
The Panthera kit has shipped and will be here Friday. So at this point, it really does make sense to make sure that the bike runs right and shifts through all the gears properly. Because if anything has to come back apart, it's better to do it now than after the e-start kit has been installed. So let's fire her up and go for a rip. Bike is warm, idling good without choke. Sounding crispy, let's take her for a spin. All right guys, so I just talked to my contact over at Magura, and the issue with the clutch is I have a little bit too much free play here. You can see when I pull up on this slave cylinder, I've got about eight and a half millimeters there. So the only thing I need to do is swap it out with this spacer, and that should do the trick. Let's see. Yeah, there we go, we're in gear right now. There's second, there's third, there's fourth, there's fifth. Okay, the tranny's smooth. Let's give her a quick little tiny hit in second here. Oh my god. Front wheel up, first burst of speed I gave it. Like, like that was like eight throttle. Just... Oh yeah, the 300 pulls. This is no YZ250. Wow, the low end is crazy. Like with a YZ250, I feel like you gotta get it into the power band a little bit to lift the front wheel, and this is just like, if that, if that lug speed pulls the front wheel up. Oh man, wow. <laughs> man, and I know it's jet and rich too. So for it to hit this nice when it's definitely not even jetted right, I'm pretty impressed. I would love to just go rip some single track on this right now. <laughs> Check out this view too. Look at the bridgers. rips we've got the clutch working I know I've been saying it for a while I promise the next YZ episode will be installation of the Panthera electric start kit if you want a chance to win this beautiful bike when it's done you can get yourself entered by clicking the link on screen or in the description guys I started this with just 500 available entries for purchase so that you know your odds at the time of this video I believe there are 115 left so they're going quick thank you guys so much for the support on the series so far I will see you very soon with some KTM content and the next YZ episode.